while still on the subject of accountability, our nation has for a long time been involved in a protracted war against corruption. Previous administrations attempted to eliminate the vice, but with mixed results that did not meet Kenyans' justified expectations. Last year, I stood here and renewed our commitment to standing against corruption, an action that has led to a robust national debate, renewed scrutiny of public officers, and strengthened institutional tools against and strengthened institutional tools against corruption. I did indeed pledge that the days of wanton corruption were numbered and that those who chose the way of graft would be brought to book. Today, there are more than 360 corruption cases before the courts, most of them involving senior public officials. Indeed, I took the unprecedented step of dismissing a third of my cabinet, a very painful but necessary decision. Those in years gone by who might have used their positions as a shield against prosecution find themselves today called to account for their actions. Cabinet secretaries, principal secretaries, governors, several chief executives of state corporations have been charged for offenses related to corruption. <coughs> Fellow Kenyans, honorable members, my message is clear. There will be and shall be no sacred cows. To complement investigation and prosecution, we are investing in preventative measures as well as tracking, seizing, and confiscating the proceeds of corruption. Let me briefly explain our strengthened approach. We have put in place a multi-agency institutional framework bringing together all entities responsible for investigation and prosecution. In this financial year, we have set aside an additional 1.6 billion shillings to support this endeavor. The sharing of information between them is now more efficient and operational aspects of investigations and prosecutions are now being completed without undue delay. The Chief Justice has created a specialized division of the High Court to handle corruption and economic crimes. The Director of Public Prosecution has in the last year trained and deployed 90 additional special prosecutors to try corruption cases. The Financial Reporting Center and the Asset Recovery Agency are now fully operational. Consequently, we have traced and are now preparing for seizure, property and assets worth 1.6 billion shillings acquired using proceeds of corruption. We intend to create a fund to which the recovered funds will be deposited with a view to use such funds for specialist projects to uplift the vulnerable in our society. We have enhanced our cooperation with different jurisdictions through mutual legal assistance agreements. This means that hiding the proceeds of corruption will get more difficult. And here at home and abroad, we will seek to prosecute the corrupt even if they seek refuge outside our borders. We have also worked with the private sector to develop tools and agreements that will ensure that it does not drive corruption in the public sector. These efforts are beginning to bear fruit. This is demonstrated by the recent quick tracing and seizure of some 400 million shillings of assets acquired through stolen National Youth Service funds. There has also been progress in Jersey in the United Kingdom as well as progress on the Anglo leasing cases. To reduce the temptation and opportunity for corruption and increase efficiency 
my government has enhanced the automation of service delivery. Speakers, honorable members, fellow Kenyans, I understand the frustration of those who feel that investigative and court processes have been manipulated by the corrupt in order to escape accountability and delay and derail justice. It is crucial, therefore, that our judiciary reduces and eliminates the frivolous exploitation of legal technicalities to defeat the course of justice. Kenyans are justified to demand from the judiciary a tightened regime that is impatient with unwarranted delay. The judiciary has the funding and the requisite leadership. It must therefore play its rightful role. It must not be perceived to be helpless, a bystander, or complacent in this war. That is a threat to our development and our security. They have cases before them. They should conclude them and tell Kenyans the verdict. Following the measures I took last year, I am encouraged by the overwhelming support Kenyans and indeed our friends abroad continue to give us in this fight. Everywhere I have gone, people have spoken clearly, demanding that corruption must be eliminated. And I believe that this war must and will eventually be won. I will today be tabling before this House the report showing cases of corruption that are already in court and another report showing frozen assets acquired using corrupt means.